Right, hi everyone. Um, this is a relatively new thing for us. It's our first in, hopefully, a in, in conversation with series. Um, I head up the customer success team. My name is Chris, and I'm joined today by David, my colleague, and Craig from GoToGames. Hey. So, first of all, just a bit of a quick intro. Um, Craig, if you could just tell me a little bit about about the background of yourself and why you started Go To Games and when it was started, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so um, I've, I've been buying and selling um, generally throughout my sort of my uh, from my teens up until now. I'm 34 years old. Um, so all the way through university and stuff, I was always a bit of a wheeler dealer, a uh, bit of a digital del boy. I think is 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 one of the terms. But um, I um, I started in. Uh, around 2010, I, I started looking at things um, a lot more sort of seriously. And then in 2012, I, um, I started a limited company, um, G2G Limited, um, which is go to games. Um, so I was very interested in video games was one of the reasons why I got into uh, that sort of sector. Uh, but also, I was really interested in brand just on the basis of that um, I'd been indoctrinated um, in one way or another through the John Lewis system. Um, so um, I had a real understanding of brand from early on. I, I moved up into sort of reasonable management positions um, quite quickly, but I think because of my general zest um, um, and, and also my interest in, in different product ranges and electronics in, in general. Um, I also worked at Matlin Electronics and um, I, I even had Flinter sort of businesses off from there from when I was young. Uh, building PCs for customers and then and then installing them in their homes. Um, so I've always been I've always had that sort of mindset of, of buy sell, but then also um, that 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 creation of brand is really important to me. Um, eBay was very much my starting point um, and heading down to the post office. Um, there was much shorter queues than there are now outside post offices, but um, but yeah, that that that's where I started, and and then obviously the that's at the point of which where Amazon, for instance, were really starting to take off um, in 2012, um, and and then then just basically being lost in this um, in this multi-channel world that we all find ourselves in now. Yeah, I mean to be honest, the the first part of that, you sound like a man after my own heart with uh, being a bit of a, a trader online. Um, you know, trawling, buying and selling, you know, that's, that's exactly sort of my background. Um, so mm. no, re really interesting, exciting. It, it's great to obviously talk to somebody with that sort of entrepreneurial background who's willing to take those risks, identify new, new markets, new marketplaces, etc. cetera. Mm. No, really, great. really good. A man after my heart with the video games as well. So <laughs> yeah, I don't get to play them as much. I'm, I spend too much time reading um, uh, blogs about the internet. I think I basically I, I find the game of life is, um, is busy enough for me. Um, but yeah, the, the the great outlet with video games is is very much that um, it's a, an, an interesting industry. One of the examples that I use, and, and no disrespect at all to pencils, but that's one of the things that I say to some of my suppliers is at least we don't sell pencils. Um, but there's lots of different types of pencils out there, and, and I'm sure that they're all uh, wonderful and, and um, interesting in their own way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah, we, we, just as a disclaimer, we love pencils as well. Yeah, we well, yeah that's it. There are, there are other pencils available. Um, I think that's, that's one of the things from the BBC, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll do something like that. Um, I love pencils. <laughs> Go to pencils. Go to pencils. Let's do it. That could be the new, right. the new business. <laughs> yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about when, the, the, just the journey really, so when an order comes in to when it's delivered, what are the processes that you go through, um, mm. you know, how, what kind of staff do you have working for, for you, that sort of stuff? Um, so very much at the beginning it was, it was about um, managing an eBay account, which was one thing, um, but as, as we all know, and um, um, the, the growth of the internet is, is, has been really sort of massive and sporadic and all over the place, is that... Um, is that in order to survive in, in, in certain sectors, uh, especially, you, you have to have a diversification mindset. Um, so it was just me at, at first. Um, um, I was very much into sort of um, supplier relationship as well and things like that. So I was always very interested in, in um, 
in procurement and, 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 and developing relationships, which I think is a really important part of um, business in general. But um, I then, I then realized that, that if I wanted to grow the business, then I would need to look at a more multi-channel route. And so uh, one of the first big systems that I took on was Limworks, which I'm sure that um, a lot of people know about. Um, I was very much not there at the start, but very early on. Um, I actually won a competition very early on um, for a year's free subscription um, with ha having a photo contest. Um, and I got the most likes on a on a photo that I took, which was reasonably creative, I think. I can't remember exactly what it was, but, but uh, Limworks was interesting to me because of the fact that, A, um, um, I'm very much um, about assessing risk. And, and the great thing about using, for instance, a third party system is it negates some of that uh, risk element because you've obviously got someone to speak to if something goes wrong um, and you can sleep at night because we all know that, that the internet doesn't sleep. Um, and if something goes wrong at one in the morning, um, you, you're not you're not you're not going to be able to catch it um so yeah um, I've, I've learned some hard lessons along the way as well i was part of the uh, um, amazon 1p glitch um which was very much um about amazon um at the time i was using a certain repricing piece of software which repriced everything to 1p um and i was at my christmas party when that happened um that was a really interesting part of my journey uh, because we found out whilst we were at the christmas party um you know, I, I had four members of staff at that point, and then we were rushing home and um, pissed as farts uh, to turn everything off as quickly as possible. Um, but the, the gist is, is that I, uh, Limworks was very much a multi a multi channel option for me as well. So they were developing into plugging into those various um, things, and then I I also got involved in Magento quite early, which is my my web platform, um, partly because of the fact that there wasn't this vast amount of um, website types out there when I first started um, or, or you know Magento was was an interesting option to me because it, it, it allowed me to feel as if I owned the platform um, in the sense of that it's a very open source piece of software. Shopify I know now I, I don't know huge amounts about it but I do know that it's very much about plugins and things like that um, I'm, I'm very much about you know I, I own my car if that makes sense. Yeah I, 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 I think the, uh, you want to be the one who's driving it yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think yeah, but it takes it takes a lot more time to develop as well. It's just as a, a, pl a point. So yeah, um, don't don't run before you can walk with Magento. Is is, is one of my uh, no, one of my no. I mean, it's not it's not necessarily the easiest system to to get to get your head around. Um, mm. we, just just this week, we've been. Um, I filmed a filmed something for for our man and mano integration with Limworks. And I've, I've used Limworks very briefly, um, but I can see can see the power with, with with all of these all of these systems. What marketplaces do you currently trade on? Obviously, we know that you've said eBay and Amazon. Are, there, mm. are you on any others? Are there any plans um, for any future marketplaces moving forward? I think that diversification is is really important, and and so. Uh, uh, just to give you an overview of who, who I'm selling on and what I'm selling on, and there's OnBuy, uh, which has cropped up. And, and OnBuy is a really interesting prospect just on the basis of that, um, you know, I was talking to them right when they were, were real small. Um, and they launched once and then they've launched again. Um, they've got a, a growth mindset. And, and if you're working with these third party companies, it's the same as if you're looking at affiliate networks, for instance, is that it's about the understanding that there's a big team behind those places that are, uh, are pushing to generate revenue as well. Um, so on buy is one um, that's that's at the moment is is bubbling. Um, they've got a real nice message in terms of it being a UK based marketplace. Um, I'm interested in that brand story, you know. Um, and then there's eBay, obviously, um, Amazon, um, Frugo is some something that I'm looking into. But I, I, I'm very much about sort of one percent. So. Um, um, you know, there's an element of the fact that you should focus on uh, the thing, you know, um, the thing that makes you most money. Um, but then also it's a sense over a period of, for instance, a financial year, uh, make a huge difference to, to the end results. Um, but having said that as well, uh, it comes with a lot of um, uh, reading and, and understanding the differences between the channels and what the nuances are. Um, 
Magento as well is, is very much my focus, um, partly because of the fact that I'm slightly older now and I'm not so, uh, not that I was ever hell bent on making huge money, but I was, um, I was very much more profit focused than I am now, whereas now I'm, I'm very much about um, sustainability and growth of, of, of people as much as it is um, uh, sales. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a very fair point. I think in our other conversations, Craig, you're doing some quite exciting item stuff in the community as well, which yeah. um, I think would be, be good to talk about as well. Um, so, I mean, if, you, if you're happy to... Uh, yeah, um, so we had, a really, we had a really exciting meeting this morning even um, with... Um, the video games industry is, is working a lot, uh, across lots of uh, official distributors. Um, the, the thing that I would say is uh, part, part of my reasoning behind not chasing profit is that there isn't a huge amount of profit in video games. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, no, it's a low margin industry as, as with, I'm, I'm sure that lots of things are boiling down into those lower margins as, as more people, uh, especially during the pandemic sort of period, come online. Um, I'm, I'm born and bred in um, South London. Um, I'm made in Croydon, I always say. Um, I live in Croydon. I love Croydon. Um, one of my mindsets is, uh, is, is from, from a guy called Retch Free 2, which is, um, do you want to be the biggest in your country or your school? I'm, I'm very much Croydon born and bred um, in terms of my schooling, etc. So I understand the importance of, of, especially in these times, of helping, uh, for instance, young people gain sort of that vital experience um, through business, etc. And they perhaps have a slightly different mindset to, to what I was like when I was younger. Um, and also there's so many more options now, which maybe make things more difficult for them to, or your young people to, to understand what route they should be going on. I, I, I couldn't imagine growing up now, for instance. Um, but I'm sure that lots of people would say to me that that's a generational thing and, and everyone says that. But um, the, the gist with my, my brand outlook is very much about um, realizing things that I've missed out on in some respects by, by growing a, an online business um, in various ways. Like I said, there's lots of reading involved in, in what I do. Um, seem to change on a daily basis as well in terms of new routes to market. Um, and um, even if you look at as a great example at the moment for especially smaller brands that I read last night is that Instagram, uh, Shopify have, have launched their, their shopping um, checkout on Instagram, which means that you can buy on it. It's, it's social content shopping, you know, um, it's a whole new realm of, oh, so now we've got to create videos and, and get used to being on Instagram live. Um, you know, those sorts of things. And who's going to do that? And then definitely not me because I'm too old for Instagram probably. But um, yeah, oh, my, my gen <laughs> we'll see. But the, the general gist is, is that um, the community side of things is, is akin to my growth um, as a person as much as it is a, a growth of a business. Um, and also, you, it's a hell of a lot more rewarding, um, I find, um, if you have a strategy that includes uh, things that are important. Um, and you can see that, that that's a general gist um, with some of the larger companies. Um, I won't name them, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's very easy to plonk a distribution center in Croydon or three or four of them, for instance, uh, and employ people. Um, but you have to ask questions about what those 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 um, facilities are, are actually doing within the community. Um, a great example is John Lewis opened in Croydon, and they're a massively um, um, important brand to the UK. I, I feel, and this is my indoctrination coming through again. Um, but I love, I love them as a brand. I think they're amazing in terms of their product selection and also the way that they deal with their staff. Um, eight, you know, eighty percent of your time on the shop floor. The rest is through training. And development which I, I feel blessed to have had um, but also when they've left the borough now I know that they've they've made a, a, a sort of massive commitment to, to continuing to, to give into the borough if that makes sense which um, it just brands about story right um, and and we miss out on that story sometimes within the realms of, of marketplace development um, so, so that's my thought process always is that um, there's just as much a, of, a, of a legacy to be had between uh, buying and selling on, online as, um, as there is, for instance, having a, a, a local shop. Um, I think it's really important to, 
to try and generate that smile online, um, which is perhaps a little bit more difficult as well. Um, and the, the key word that's been coming through and shining through for me all the way through this um, pandemic, and I, I, I was recording something on my telly last night, just every time I see the word, I send it to a few of my friends to irritate them, but the words uh, community. Um, if you're able to create a community online, then I think you're doing great things. And, and if that can bleed into your locality, then um, even better, because we, I think we can all see as well that our high streets are suffering, you know? Yeah, and I think I, I think at the minute it's it's a very that's probably one takeaway from from this video is you know community we're all we're all struggling by the, you know the effect of pretty much a year of full lockdown um, and you know look after you think about your community think about your neighbours and your friends that you may not have seen in quite a while and um, mm. maybe just reach out to them um, and I think. Touching on touching base on what you mentioned about John Lewis, I think it's it's you know for for a UK business that is that used to be sort of the heavyweight of of the high street, um, they are going through some tough times. I know you know I, I'm I'm sort of in the Midlands, and it was a big big shock when their Birmingham mm. uh, in Birmingham shop in, in the station just just went pretty much overnight it was such a such a shock and I know that they've announced I think it was late last week or early this week in terms of shutting I think eight more eight more stores which is it's such a shame um, yeah for sure just for sure such a shame. I think one of the great things that you're doing though with you know we spoke last time about the young people that you work with mm. is the fact that you're giving them a role model about you know being an entrepreneur building something for yourself but doing it via a medium that young people are interested in you know i used to be a teacher mm. and the amount of students who when you speak to them and you say you know what do you want to do one day is to be, it's video games you know i want to be a streamer i want to design games whatever it might be and actually by using the interesting games you can open the door to uh, a much more interesting world potentially and a much more viable world for a lot of them which is getting into industry, getting yeah. into getting into retail, and potentially being able to then leverage that experience like yourself and John Lewis. You know, if you can become mm. that John Lewis to these young people who then go off and set up their own things, then I think you know you're, you're building that legacy that you're talking about, which is awesome. Yeah, and there's a there's a there's always a, a transferability in skills, which I I I understood on and. Um, I'm even the, the wheeler dealer aspect of me. I know where that comes from, and it, it comes from my dad. And and he, he used to um, he used to take me to uh, police auctions, which were um, almost like repossessed stuff. Um, and I used to go there and look at the watches and things because I found watches interesting. And and then they would have PCs and things like that that I'd look at. And one of the one of the first things that I bought was a a pallet of um, um, laptop cases. Um, when he let me bid on something, you know, and, and that was a reasonably closed circuit sort of thing. I don't know if they go on anymore, but the, the transferability of that skill to, to, um, to understand what things are, are, are going to buy, you know, are going to work online, etc. But then also leading that into to the fact that uh, if you're working in retail, it doesn't, it doesn't just mean that you work in retail. It's a, it's a, it's a, a part and parcel of your life CV and, and, um, and looking at that transferability, um, based on what you're learning, whether it be organisational skills or the ability to, to talk to people or um, um, the ability to turn up on time, for instance, is, is just as important. Um, unless you're an entrepreneur and then you get to turn up when you like. But, um, but that also means that you never really leave the office. It's always in your mind. Um, yeah, so, so I, think that, I think that there needs to be more of a, a push towards that sort of entrepreneurial mindset in um, in certain realms, especially in, in certain areas of the UK, for instance, um, you know, I went to university and, um, and I was, you know, I used to run for uh, South of England. I used to do all sorts of sporting stuff when I was in Croydon schools. And then I went to university and went mental for three years. Um, and there's a transferability in that skill as well, even. Of, um, but I, if, if that makes sense, I, I, I don't always feel as if I needed to go to university in order to, to understand what what or who I was as a person um I did film and video production um and I don't think I've ever used it but I, I know that I've used uh, a lot of the skills um that I learned through that um anyway yeah it's it, I, young people it's it's about 
giving them opportunity, but then also giving them uh, the understanding of the fact that it's it's one of one of many things that will will will, will occur in their lives. Um, and if they're able to look at it from a transferability sort of point of view, as much as it is, um, you know, merchandising and things like that, um, or um, spreadsheets, as we all know, are a massive part of everyone's lives. I didn't know when I was younger that I would be basically a spreadsheet, um, but now I am, and, and I'm, I'm quite pleased to be a spreadsheet. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's knocking boredom out of people's heads and, and understanding that if, if we're living in this digital world, a lot of it is involved with, with sitting, on, sitting on chairs and, and staring at screens all day. Um, so if you can make it more interesting for those people by, by, by looking at the content routes as well, then that's something that I would always impress on people. Yeah, I think, it's, I think what you said, Craig, is very, very valid. Um, you know, I, I, like myself, I did accountancy and finance at university. And while mm. I haven't progressed with that, the, that's given me the sort of the foundation level of, I suppose, being able to start my own business have that um, understanding of companies' accounts, and I'm quite a numbers guy. So, um, with with sort of buying and selling, trading, being able to do the bookkeeping, it's all very mm. valuable stuff. And I think uh, I think the takeaway point for me there was what you said when you were uh, you went with your dad to the police auctions. Is you learn the value of money at a young age, and I think that is I think probably David can resonate with that. Um, from from the, the education teaching angle is that's so important. It, it, mm. It's a big one for me that that for, for the for the next generation to understand that. Um, mm. You've got this palm tree behind me, um, and money doesn't <laughs> grow on there. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I think, think I think it's I think what you've said is it resonates a lot, um, and I think. It probably is that similar backgrounds that, that we have um mm. and yeah it's really it's really good to hear and it's good to yeah. hear that um the business is business is going well as well um great so and, think- and, and that, touching on the accountancy stuff as well that, that's one of my biggest um, things just in general is is if you if you're starting a, a, a business make sure that that bit's right at the beginning um because otherwise you you spend a lot of time and a lot of money backpedaling to work out what it is. And an accountant doesn't understand your business as well as you do, but if you don't understand the bit that the accountant needs to do, then, then you, you get yourself into reasonable trouble quite quickly. Um, yeah, just as a takeaway point, that, that, that please find yourself a good accountant. Um, I suppose kind of pulling things back to uh, marketplaces, Mm. And specifically eBay, you know, you spoke about on buying Frugo as kind of new potential marketplaces. Um, but coming back to eBay, what would your your plans or your hopes for 2021 be? Um, so, I mean, I mean, the reason that we're talking is, is because of the platform that you um, you work with or have created um, or, or work to create. Um, um, eBay eBay was one of those things where it's, it made me at the beginning and, and then um, and it, it sort of went, it, it didn't fall by the wayside, but it became very much a, a second channel, if that makes sense, um, um, based around the sort of Amazon growth that we saw or we, we have seen. Um, but also it's about that understanding of, of the, if you're doing multi-channel retail, it's understanding what each of the channels need and at what times and um, and all of these channels are going through different development cycles as well. So it's keeping up with those things. Um, is is um, eBay within within the realms of, of like you asked, like the 2021 side of things is for me to really get much more of a focus on on what is required um, um, in order to to generate sales. Um, but then also just that there's been a slight change in our mindset. Um, um there's a slight change in our mindsets in terms of the way that we're doing for instance service um on ebay um and that's 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 in general um uh in terms of the way that that people expect things now for instance um so you have to you have to you have to become akin to that sort of mindset um uh, people are, are in my mind um, a, a lot less patient in terms of the way in which you're um going through process for instance so it's about coming up with contingencies for instance on 
uh, how to alleviate that customer need for, uh, or not alleviate the customer need, alleviate the, the or reduce the processes around um, uh, wait, making people wait, basically, um, for things to be returned and those sorts of things. But then also within the realms of, of OptiSeller, um, it's understanding the importance of, of rich content on the internet. Um, um, so where the sources of that rich content are coming from, um, down, right down to sort of specifications, titles. Um, at the moment, we're trying to decide whether we um, are going to move up into an anchor store, um, just because there's certain benefits there that perhaps we wouldn't have as a brand with um, a just a slightly lower um, uh, subscription. Um, it's, it's looking at it from a much more managed perspective on the basis of that I feel comfortable that eBay are in a, a place now where they have decided on their, their model, as it were. Not that they hadn't before, but there was a lot of changes, even down to, um, I had a phone call earlier on, that they're moving their payment um, um, gateway sort of in-house, I think it is. Um, but there, there seems to be a much more structured way in which to do things on, on eBay uh, or what, they, what, what the requirements are. And, and like I said, with, with something like OptiSeller, it's made it a lot more apparent and easy for me to, to, to be better read on that sort of subject. So I know based on the systems that, that, that you guys have provided that um, what my targets are in order to, to maintain a strong account. Um, and, and that also feeds back into my, my general company processes. Um, which also bleed into the rest of the, the development that I'm working on. Yeah. Do you find that any of the stuff that you'd be doing for OptiSeller is then potentially beneficial for your other marketplaces as well? Um, yeah, so I, I think that there's, there's a general um, understanding now that rich content like us is, uh, is, um, is really important um, in terms of that if, if, if there's a commitment to, to the administrative side of your business, um, and it's done in a, a particular way that means that you are um, conscious of it on a, on a consistent basis. Um, that, they're the sort of 1% you need to look for um, in life in order to, to be that, that step above, uh, for instance, someone else that's, that's happy just to list something and, and see if it sells. Um, but also there's, there's bleeding into the, the understanding of, um, I don't sell white label products, I sell third party products. Um, and again, it's another thing with, uh, video games need many uh, specifications in order to uh, to complete a listing, as it as it were. Whereas a, a pencil is perhaps a, a a slightly less specification, um, maybe slightly more of a range totalum. I'm I'm not sure, but the um, the the gist with it is is that that rich content is available and and um, important across platforms. And and I know that for instance, Frugo are, are people that ask for for that sort of um, content to be adhered to. Um, your website is is an important part of your, or, sh or if it is a, an important part of your growth strategy, um, should also um, uh, maintain that, that sort of strong um, outlook towards specifications. And that even bleeds into the reason why um, people would shop at John Lewis is that, um, so my dad again is a great example of someone that's probably already made a decision on what he wants to buy uh, based on his own reading and understanding of, of, of uh, technology or those sorts of things. But then he would go in and ask a, a John Lewis partner um, the things that he already knows to, to, to sort of make sure that those are the things that are, that are true. Um, so if someone's shopping on, on even, for instance, a, a website, um, giving them as much content um, or useful content as, as possible is really important um, just because it means that they, know what they're buying and then what they're buying into. And then hopefully that also bleeds into other processes where you're not having people uh, feeling as if they've received something that they, they didn't buy into. Um, and again, with the white labeling side of stuff that, um, or um, selling your own branded product, um, it's about creating that brand story um, and also giving an outlook of the fact that you know what you're talking about. And, um, and that will give people, I would guess, confidence to buy. Yeah, I mean, exactly. On, I know on, on eBay and Amazon specifically, it's especially with the industry that, that people trade in, the video games, mm. the competition is going to be sort of rife. 
So mm. you need to try and get ahead of that competition any way that you can, whether that's by from an eBay, uh, eBay perspective, putting in all your item specifics, optimizing your titles, having those clear images, those clean descriptions, the anchor store that, that we mentioned, that will obviously give you free um, secondary categories. So could you leverage those? So do your products have multi-use, which, which is a good avenue for you to perhaps consider. And at the same pretty much applies on Amazon um, with, with the attributes, the enhanced brand content, content um, SFP, Prime, you know, all that good stuff. So, and, and by putting in all of this extra information, you're giving yourself that extra search visibility on the marketplace, but mm. you're possibly also reducing the return rates by putting in the relevant content, probably more relevant to maybe clothing than, than video games, because see, the return rates are going to be a lot higher with the clothing than they are the video games. Mm. But also going to reduce possibly your customer service angle by you're telling them that information. So you're going to get less questions asked um, mm. about the particular products that you're selling. So the data is obviously what Optiseller, uh, we are specialists in marketplace data. Um, and we give obviously a, a number of tools um, at the minute for, for eBay sellers to, and that will, that will open up um, in the relatively near future into other marketplaces as well. So you'll be able to hopefully plug in and see, see this for the other marketplaces, um, not just yeah. specifically. You know, we, we've spoken about a bit about uh, go to games, the processes, the marketplaces, your plans, how Optiseller yeah. has helped you. I mean, and, and probably a, a pertinent question for, for now is, how has lockdown helped or affected your business? Um, I think it's been really different for everyone and, um, uh, and, and difficult in its, in its own ways. Um, so at the beginning, um, I think we could, we could see it coming before the lockdown started, if that makes sense. Um, but there wasn't a huge amount of time for contingencies to come into play. Um, a great example is that, um, and I'm, I'm sure she won't mind me saying, but my, my general manager, who's my number two, basically, um, I'm a big Star Trek fan, uh, so really, my number one, uh, which, you know, um, uh, Will Riker sort of role, um, she, she, she got, she got re very ill, um, um, which, which obviously has a, a big knock-on effect with things, um, but then also that understanding of the fact that, that um, as a director of a company, it's about safeguarding your staff um, and, and making sure those people are, uh, if they're not meant to be in the building, they shouldn't be in the building. So, so a really interesting example for us is that actually our demand for products went up massively, uh, but our ability to serve that product was diminished on the basis of health and safety. Um, and, and also it was a consistent and constant conversation. I, whenever I think about it, I thought about it in the shower earlier actually, but just that moment where, um, when we were all clapping and um, you know, it was on the news all the time and you were getting pings on your phone and it, it really felt in some respects, a little bit apocalyptic um, in terms of what is coming here, but then also um, what do I do? And that was, uh, you know, I've got links into the councils and things like that. And, you know, ringing up with uh, ringing up and asking what, what am I meant to be doing? And those and certain in, within certain realms coming back and saying, we don't know either, you know, um, Run as, run as you feel fit and, and um, you know, the safeguarding of staff is important. Um, but that brings on the real important part of a multi-channel mindset um, is that uh, although the demand went up, um, I'm blessed with the ability to be able to switch things on and off. Um, so it then becomes a little bit more of a rhythmic, um, you know, but as, as whenever Boris Johnson was speaking about lockdowns, we were getting massive spikes in sales. But... Um, you know, which, which sounds great, but actually it, it puts a hell of a lot more load on the systems. Uh, one of the first things that I did was I turned off um, the website. Um, not completely, but I, I unho unhooked it from, uh, for instance, Google Shopping um, and other elements, um, partly because of the fact um, that 
it's, it's a development model, um, but also because of the fact that I've spent so long developing my ideas around brand and protecting that, that side that um, actually it, it wasn't worth destroying the brand on the basis of, of generating sales that perhaps we weren't able to fulfill because we weren't even sure if raw mail were going to turn up the next day or if our suppliers would be, um, you know, whether their warehouses were opened or closed. And so even down to the, um, some of the, the developing relationships that we have with suppliers, I, I completely um, became, well, I became very insular actually um, in terms of the way that I went about things. Um, and I'm someone, um, you know, I was in the warehouse yesterday because we've got um, a couple of guys off this week um, for a break, um, which is really important to give people breaks as well. But, you know, I love being in the warehouse as much as I love being upstairs um, because it allows me to think about what, 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 next as much as it is sitting in front of a computer reacting to emails reacting to zooms reacting to those sorts of things um so i was up and down all over the place um and and trying to fill fill in the gaps um but also i was I, like i said i was blessed with the fact that i was able to to turn down the different dials and turn them up etc so although we we've, we've had a, a greater um level of sales for instance that doesn't that hasn't equated really to, to more success for me in any, in any shape or form. Um, just on the basis of that, for instance, um, through third party distribution prices change based on, um, supply, um, official distribution, um, even down to, uh, big releases of games and things like that. Um, you know, that, that all changes and it becomes much more difficult to, to have a, a route into, uh, promotion if you if you don't have the right staff available um, to promote that product so it's been a really interesting time um, you know and, and and obviously there's been a huge growth I would guess on people waking up to the fact that if you have a physical store then it might be worth having an online store um, I think I'm, I'm privy to, to a lot of groups on Facebook and, and all sorts of different you know reddit and things like that I, I do a lot of reading like I said um, um, the big thing with selling online is, is understanding that it's not chuck it up and sell it. Um, it's, it's now a whole tapestry of, of different things that you have to consistently get right on a, on a consistent and periodic basis um, in order to succeed. Um, one of the great examples is, is having an FBA business is, is one thing, but um, you know, I, I get bombarded with, uh, for better or for worse, I'm, I'm constantly bombarded by, by my social media telling me that I need, um, you know, uh, the next marketing company that will increase my ROI by 10 billion percent. And that also if I start an FBA business and turn over £100,000 a year, um, I can sit on that beach that you're sitting on, Chris. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's all... There's so many different realms to, to the way in which things can be done. So um, you have to find your niche is really important, and but then also have a, a commitment to the fact that it's it's um, it's a 24-hour job in some respects if you're directing the company. Um, I've said a few times over this this pandemic that um, not that people have been able to do it, but um, you know it'd be really nice to have a, uh, just a shop in Croydon that does all right. And, and at the end of the night, I uh, you know like open all hours. Um, David Jason, like just close it down and go home, you know, um, and then cash up and, and that's it. Um, or work in a pub. I, I wouldn't mind working in a pub again. That was great fun. Well, let's hope it won't be too long before we can all. Can all <laughs> yeah, just go to the pub. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, this year it's been, for the past year now, it's pretty much been Christmas every day for, for e commerce, hasn't it? Um, it? It's just, it's just booming and, yeah, I, I, I always feel a little bit, um, I have Amazon Prime and when I order something, I think, oh, right, I've ordered that in the evening at this, this time and it's arrived by lunchtime the next day. What mm. processes have had to go into place for me to get that? You know, and, and mm. there's quite a lot involved. And um, while it's for impressive, sure. it's also you start to think, oh, well, is that is is that something that I want to do? Want to be part of forever? Um, but I suppose that that's a whole different mm. whole different conversation itself. 
I think if you throw into Brexit into the into the mix as well, um, and I don't know whether your products are sourced um, outside outside of the UK, EU, within the EU as well. Um, there's obviously there's been a whole host of ramifications with that, and I know that mm. speaking with other sellers um, early January, uh, even towards early February as well, we were still dealing with a lot of a lot of headaches with that. For sure, um, for sure. Yeah, and it's, it's even looking at the, the uh, well, literally just before this, um, I was speaking to my um, general manager, who's feeling a lot better, by the way, um, is um, um, we've got stuff that was in, we were using pan-European FBA, for instance. Um, so we've got elements of the fact that although we didn't have any stock left in there, um, that we were running at such a pace last year that, that the Brexit thing was just, it was, you know, I felt like Tracy Beaker, you know, I was, it was chuck it, chuck it in the corner. And, you know, I was, it was, you know, pee, pee me off basically whenever I thought about it. It was like, that, that's just a really small part of what's going on here. But really it's a, a massive thing. But um, we're starting to get returns on certain products. Um, you know, um, electronic products don't always work. Um, you know, uh, controllers and things, that there's various things that people can send back. And, and obviously Amazon have ways in which, to allow people to send those things back. Um, but, you know, we, uh, in order to get inventory removed now from, from European marketplaces um, on that pan-European FBA route is they're not going to ship it back to the UK uh, because they're not doing cross-border trading. So actually it's come to pass um, even in the last couple of days and, and it doesn't matter how much reading you do, you're going to miss stuff like this um, in, in, my, in my mind. But, you know, they're saying you need an address in to. So then you you're looking much more on the basis of well, what, what freight forwarders do we use and who do you think we, we know well enough that we can just say, well, would you mind us sending a load of broken crap, you know, back to you um, to come back to us to then go back to our official suppliers? Um, you know, it's, it's um, yeah, there's, there's many parts to the, the whole Brexit process that, um, that are, um, yeah, it's, like you said, it's just it's it's another thing to to read and to know about, and um, and the, the the good thing with the video game side of stuff is um, is that I've you know I've got a reasonable supply in the UK as much as anything, um, but also like I said, I always go back to um, what am I wanting to achieve? Am I wanting to achieve um, a global domination, a UK domination? Uh, do I want to be Mike Ashley? Probably not. Um, what would I like from 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 what I am, uh, you know, I am creating or what what I'm working on? Um, and for me, it's it's become very different. Um, just though, even over the last sort of three or four years, um, of that that sustainability is what's important. And even like you said, Chris, about the the Amazon process is is um, it's it's understanding where you want to fit in that model. And, and a great example is um, uh, if you've got Seller Fulfilled Prime at the moment, I know for instance, in uh, a couple of months, they're, they're basically asking us to work a Saturday or a Sunday to keep that service going. Um, yeah, so, that, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, uh, am I ruler of my own ship? Um, yeah, I, I, I've seen that. Um, and I think with the Brexit, I, I'm speaking to some sellers that they just, they just turned off uh, post internationally for the minute. Uh, until yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Um, it, yeah, and and, and the, the 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 interesting part of that is is that even with an Optus seller, that's one of the things that that you should aim for is cross border trading. And and so with the Optus seller thing, I'm I'm very much piecing through the bits. Um, oh God, it sounds like the Serenity Prayer that I'm about to go into, but it's, uh, it's uh, you know, I'm, I'm affecting the things I can change at the moment and I'm, I'm not getting too worried about the things that I can't. But um, yeah, if, if, you're, if you're working in a whack-a-mole sort of way with, with the way in which you guys are producing that, that, um, that dashboard uh, to allow people to understand what they're looking for, you don't have to achieve it all at once. Um, and also it's really important to stress that if you're starting from scratch, uh, get it right at the beginning and then you don't have to work backwards which is um you know if you've got over a thousand SKUs and, and you have to you have to get all of that information in in various ways um it, it's much more difficult than than having that process in place at the beginning so um choose your third party companies carefully um and 
and always always try and factor them into your costing but then also understand the fact that um you know that I, I can't remember what you guys service fee is but but i always divide that by 30 days um and see how yeah, much it I, is. I, I think i think with with what with with the dashboard that we offer um mm. it gives you a good a good view on the areas to focus on and mm. yeah you're completely right that you're not going to be able to do all of those in one go mm. Um, mm. But my philosophy is get get the data right, and the dashboard will point you in the directions for fixing the data. Get that mm. up to a, as good a level as you can, and, and that you're able to, and then you can start doing the more intricate promotions and the pr promotional activity. Because why promote why promote something that its data isn't as good as it could be? Because then your yeah. conversion is just going to nosedive. If, yep. if you've got your data up to a scratch and then you start promoting, well, then your conversion is going to rise. Um, and that's, that's the philosophy that, that I follow on. That's what I've done myself and educate other sellers to do so. Um, mm. and, and, and Dashboard is one of the tools that, that, that sellers can have access to and, and, and pay for um, mm. that, that was going to help them on their marketplace journey. Um, yeah, and I think... And I yeah, go on, go on, Craig. And I think I think also it's just a really important point of, around the sort of pricing strategy is that if your if your if your listing is in a uh, in in many realms sort of um, optimized in a particular way, uh, we, we I think we're all guilty um, as sellers, for instance, um, with reprices and things of, of, of creating races to the bottom um, in terms of, of what our margins are. Um, I'd be willing to bet, and I, I know that, that if you're able to generate more impressions based on an optimized listing, then um, price doesn't always have to be the thing that people are going for. And, and it's always, always that uh, understanding of the fact that different marketplaces have different types of customers. Um, but within those customers as well, you know, uh, there's a, a huge range of uh, mindsets in terms of that trust element and things like that. Um, and we don't live in a um, a, a country of ten thousand people. We live in a country of you know, um, is it, it's getting up towards is it eighty million, um, something like that. It's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity out there. So um, don't price yourself too low, um, and and your your margin should be based on what you'd hope to achieve in terms of of creating those sorts of listings. I think that will generate the right type of customer for you as much as it is the sale. Between David and I, we've both got one last question that is, what are your predictions for e-commerce in 2021? What, what do you see as, as the breakout thing? Um, or do you see much of the same for a period of time? Um, and then it will shift. Um, I think I mentioned. I think I mentioned it earlier. The thing that I, that I find really interesting is social commerce. Um, um, that's that's mainly. It's, it's because of two things. Is one that is. Um, it's it's almost these these big social media entities wanting to get a slice of that pie, um, which actually, when you read about it constantly, becomes a very boring thing to read. Um, you know these people want this, these people want this, Google want a, a slice of the gaming industry, these people want a slice of this industry. It's, um, it, it's, for me, it's, it's about that, that uh, new reality where we're, we're moving through a generational um, process with the internet in the sense of that people, people are, are sitting on these content houses, you know? Um, it's, yes, there's the marketplaces, et cetera, uh, that already exist and that's the way that people shop, but that's not always going to be the way that people shop, I don't think. So I think the big trend for 2021 um, will be looking more at that sort of route of, um, of social commerce. Um, but also, I think it's really interesting to stress or, or important to stress with that. It makes my life a hell of a lot more interesting um, to think about as well in the sense of that um, it's not just getting staff, for instance, on the growth of a brand to come in on the basis of, of working on spreadsheets, listing products and hope that they sell. It's, it's creating a whole route of 
um, ingenious uh, ideas uh, to better promote your your brand. Um, it depends what you want from life, though. Always um, is you know it, it may be that you're you're using uh, marketplace as a second income, for instance, or it's um, a side gig, which a lot of blogs talk about now. Um, or whether you're fully focused on creating something that's a, a lot larger and a lot more uh, intricate. Um, so I've, I've, that's what that's that's one of the things that I'm watching anyway. Um, but I'm watching it more as um, someone that would like to see that as as um, something partly because of the fact that that I know where that's where people sit. Um, uh, but then also it, it it makes my life more interesting in general. You know, I'm I'm happy to to buy and sell, but but it'd be really interesting if I can be more involved in content production, which brings me back to um, my university course days, which is, I, I wanted to be involved in that sort of stuff, you know? Um, and I ended up being whipped off into the world of e-com. Well, I mean, it could, could end up going full circle back to, back to what you, back to what yeah. you studied at university. But I think, I think social commerce, yeah, it's, it's a big one. I mean, social media has been sort of really, really pushed by the big brands. You've got like Boohoo, Misguided and, and all of those types of brands advertising on shows such as Love Island. And yeah. now they're coming up with a way to how to really monetize that. And, and if, if they can turn it into, um, and I know the sites like um, obviously WhatsApp are testing, or I believe that they might have even released the, the function to, to pay for things. Um, using that and obviously you've got Facebook marketplace there's, there's a big there's a big avenue there now um, and it's I think I think to be honest my one that I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on is is, is what Shopify do um, mm. because they they could they could compete with Amazon um, and that's just that's just my sort of uh, prediction yeah. but, uh, but no yeah, and I think um, I think that's really important uh, on the basis of um, Shopify. I, I obviously I, I look into and I've spoken to people at Shopify. I, I think that my beast is a bit big um, to fit into that, but that doesn't mean that my entrepreneurial mindset isn't working on other things in the background uh, that I would I would work very much towards that sort of platform. Um, it depends on how many products you want to produce and uh, or, or you know produce online um, and. And how you know what your skew levels are and things like that are really important. Um, I think that there, there, there's a lot of people that think that a drop shipping route is is an easy route as well. Um, it's really not if you want to do it properly. Um, and that's all down to the rich content side of stuff. It's not again. It's not just listing stuff on eBay and and um, telling the supplier to to ship it. And I think that that's going to be one of the the, the perhaps pitfalls of. Um, social commerce in the, the teething stages is that um, is that eBay have been around for an awfully long time. Um, I'm sure they've got vast teams working on um, keeping that platform as it is and also developing that platform. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not easy to repeat that pattern, you know, um, and it's the social commerce side of stuff is, is very much about uh, the liability that comes with uh, offering that sort of service on on those those platforms um but my my general gist is is that the the internet is a vast area there's lots of different ways in which you can generate custom um you should be looking at all of them um but if you're going to be looking at all of them it's a full-time job for sure yeah. yeah yeah i think that's a really good point there about um you know, the way, what you said earlier about, okay, this is how people shop at the moment, but it's not necessarily how people shop. And mm. I think you've got that first movers advantage if you're already in the space, but equally there's flexibility that comes with being new to it. I mean, if you think about things like Airbnb, right, that should have been, uh, Hilton Hotels should have developed Airbnb or, a, you know, a taxi firm should have developed Uber, but they mm. were setting, they were doing things. And actually this new thing came along that used the technology and the way that people wanted to operate. So I think there is that space available there for um, mm. new businesses to come in, to look at the way things are changing and to do something mm. slightly different and to have mm. that adaptability that perhaps some of the bigger players don't have because they're managing these behemoths. 
So yeah. it kind of works both ways, I think. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, it's it's um, yeah, it'd be intriguing to see the way that, the way that things go. And and I think that that's what you're basically saying as well is that if you jump in the pool, keep swimming. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Don't stand still and go. We've got this. No. You no. want to be thinking about how would your what would if you were developing something now to to compete with what you've got? What would you be developing? What more would you be offering? And then go and do that thing. Don't sit there and be complacent. I think. For sure, yeah, and it's um it's it's an interesting realm. Um, but then also, like I said earlier, I, I, there's there's parts of me, and I'm I'm not I'm not saying that it's not not to get into, but I, I think I said to someone the other night, um, I'd quite like to work in a zoo. You know, um, it, it, if you're in this space, it's uh, it's there's an element of all encompassingness with it, just on the on the basis of that it it's um it's a very progressive um place to be um and like i said the great thing about having these third party um elements to your business means a that you're not having to employ people to learn um the learning is in part already done um and you just have to create the process in order to um allow for that that to, to make uh inroads into into sales yeah no i, I think uh I think we've we've covered a lot in this uh, in this hour of, of conversation, and I think there's there's, there's hopefully a lot of takeaways uh, from that I can take myself, and hopefully David and Craig, you can you can have key takeaways from this. And mm -hmm. I think it's been I think it's been it's been really sort of enlightening to hear your your journey from from where you started, so from your from you growing up, as we mentioned, the, the learning the value of the money and, and testing the waters on that first pallet of goods to that, that point to where you are now. And if you, obviously, there's plenty of things that we would have, ch that you'd probably change. Um, and I, 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 as I can say, from my, from my background, there's plenty of things that I would probably look back and think, oh, I would probably do that a bit differently, but we live and learn. there's a lot of people that, that have missed out on opportunities in the last year and that's even down to if you're looking at uh, people that that uh, that went to university to be locked indoors for however many weeks you know um, there's experiences being missed um, but there's also elements of the fact that there's opportunities that have been gained and, and it's about your grind in life and um, I don't switch off and and so that's why I, I, I'm happy to share any ideas that I have with people if anyone wants to talk about those things in more depth um, I'm I'm not afraid of competition because I don't see life as competition. I see it as a, as um, like you said, uh, Chris, it's a, it's a, for me, life is a CV and, and you, you, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to make mistakes, but also within the realms of a lot of stuff, people aren't going to, unless you pay people, they're not going to tell you what you need to know. And, and the likelihood of that person actually knowing what you need to know when you do pay them is reasonably small. So you have to, you have to be conscious of the fact that, yeah, you've got to make all sorts of mistakes all over the place. Um, I've made some massive mistakes that I haven't gone into um, over the last year. Um, but they're not massive in the sense of that, that um, it's all learning for me and I'm not going to make them again. Um, I'm, I'm happy to share those with those in another call. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying, basically, that there's, there's lots of people that, that haven't had the opportunity within High Street, for instance, to have their stores open and... Um, and um, and push into to different um, developmental areas based on the situation. They've been made to sit at home, but then also there's lots of um, learning opportunities that perhaps have, have come from that as well um, in terms of the way in which people think about their business and, and how they're able to project themselves to a much wider audience than just um, a local community. Yeah, I think uh, and, and just to sort of round off here, I think what I was sort of, trying to say um a little bit earlier is, is around you know some businesses and some sectors have been closed for mm. more or less a year now and you know there's obviously been relevant uh, numerous schemes for low business loans grants that type of thing however a few people and i, I probably yourself is within that directors of companies limited companies have not had that support I mean, for example, my, my hairdresser, and I think 
we've probably all three of us on this call have had a DIY haircut over this past year. I know Craig's had here at the moment. Look, I mean, look what I did here. Look, as you see the. the yeah. I, I don't care about these things. It, it made me laugh. But yeah, I tried to do my sideburns. I just lopped off the the whole of the left hand side. But yeah, well, I, think I, I, I did mine a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think David's due to do his very soon. Um, but, uh, but but yeah, and, and obviously they're a limited company, and they've been open and shut for numerous times, haven't they? And mm -hmm. I think it mm -hmm. is a shame. Um, but I think I think I think the point that we've got to summarise with is hopefully by. Second for the second half of this year, we can all get out and have probably the biggest, the biggest celebration party and get together with friends and family that we haven't yeah. been able to hug and see for the past for the past over a year, probably by that point. And I think while while we're all sort of at work and we all three of us have got jobs, we've got we've got the businesses and we've got the money coming in. You know, there are people who unfortunately have not have not been able, you know, may have lost their jobs, they have lost loved ones. And I think, you know, we need to we need to obviously you know, raise a glass to those and the people who are working to to keep to keep the country moving, whether it's the NHS, care workers and various other key workers. Um, so that's that's sort of the take one of the takeaways for me. And um, no, it, I think. I think this this call, Craig, is, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have a have a sort of a, a good a good hour, a good conversation uh, about how how your business has, has has obviously gone from inception to now, and mm. to see to see the journey and, and long may it continue um, over over the rest of this year and years to come. I appreciate that, and um, yeah, and thank you guys as well. You've you've focused my mind um, on certain elements of of things that I. Uh, perhaps wouldn't have had the time to read around, so I've I've, I've made some some reasonable inroads quite quickly, and, and the whole the whole the whole realm of of um, of looking at things like on your dashboard of impressions, um, etc., going up and uh, in one hubbed place means that uh, there's a, there's an addictive tendency to the way that I go about stuff, and, and you want you want to hit those targets on a weekly, but. Um, yeah, um, I'm I'm all about collaboration as well, so so um, it's it's great. To collaborate with with positively mindseted people, but um, but also if if um, if anyone wants to work with a a, a community led gaming company on a collaboration of, of some sort, um, I won't tread on your toes if you don't tread on mine. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think um, I think I think that's probably that's probably all from me. Um, I mean, David, any anything to Anything to add there? No, I think it's been great. You know, thanks for your time, Craig. Um, it's always a pleasure having a chat, um, you know, putting the world to rights. Uh, but it's always nice as well just to be able to go into depth that, you know, me and Chris might not necessarily speak to sellers about, to start talking about, you know, the journey to understand, you know, stuff outside of the realms of marketplaces as well. Um, it's always nice to get that, that whole picture. And I think it helps mm -hmm. us to then go in and, in how we support other retailers as well with that kind of full of view of what, what their world might look like or, you know, that what might be on their plate at any given moment in time. It's quite easy for us to sit there and think about marketplaces being everybody's priority at every moment, but actually at any given moment in time, there could be so many other things going on in a business. Um, so it's good to kind of, as somebody who hasn't been there to hear about it and to understand it a bit better. Great, yeah. And we're all fragile creatures, so let's look after each other a bit more. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a nice it's a nice way to round this off. But now I think just 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 from my angle, obviously this is this is this is probably obviously for hopefully the the people who end up listening or, or, or watching this, but obviously this is very new to us. Uh, it's something that Craig has obviously uh, volunteered for as, as the as the guinea pig on this and hopefully people have found it interesting and enlightening and, and they can everybody can take something away from it but if you would like to see something like this again or another one of these and we form it into a series then do let us know give us our feedback give us the good good and the bad feedback because 
it's the bad feedback where we can really make changes and implement those um obviously so so yeah um well anyway i think thanks a lot craig jane and david and uh and keep in touch and uh, and most important of all stay safe thank you guys cheers guys take care cheers guys Good day, sir.